blessings before this wonderful message from my father in the lord late archbishop bensi idaosa i like to share information about anointedtube.com with you the number one christian video sharing website today anointedtube.com this is a powerful site believed to be the top most Christian video sharing website in the world today. It is ranked as one of the best video sharing website according to available data. It hosts videos of preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from all around the world. You can as well share our video on all social media platforms. The World Database of Christian Preachers, positively touching and changing lives around the world. It is a great Christian video sharing website. The Lord bless you. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers' pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Thanks to God for 20 years. Amen. 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 We look back. But, but more important, we look forward. But one thing that we want to do, and the Archbishop's here with us, and we asked him whether he'd do it, is to unveil a commemoration of 20 years. Because we look back and we can always look and we can say, God's been good. In the past, I've always found him faithful and I know he will never fail me.
Amen? Amen. And so we're going to ask the Archbishop now if he'd come and unveil a plaque we have. Amen. Amen. I say amen. amen. The best is yet to come. Amen. The best is yet to come. Amen. Glory be to God. The Bible says, make his deeds known around the world. As I unveil this plaque, I pray that every hand that have contributed to the growth and development of this ministry shall everything that was hidden from them be made known and the blessings of God increase in double measure. In the name of God the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Yes, Lord. Amen. Penel Pentecostal Church. From a grateful generation, in honor of Right Reverend Michael Reed, with all the qualification, Bishop of Pennell Church International, and Reverend Dr. Ruth Reed, with all the qualifications, founders of the church on the occasion of the church's 20th anniversary. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. John chapter 17, verse 3. This plaque was unveiled by me. <laughs> Let me hear say hallelujah. I want, to, I want to make this prophetic statement to each and every one of you. Any good thing that ever hid from you before is now unveiled. The good that you desire shall become your portion from now. Amen. God bless you and congratulations. The Lord of the new day, the Lord of the new day, it has come, the dawning of the new day. The dawning of the new day, the dawning of the new day, it has come, the dawning of the new day. It has come, the dawning of the new day. standing for one minute more before you sit down because uh, you need to sit to take notes and write all that God laid in my heart to share on this hour. Say hour. hour. 20th, 20th anniversary. anniversary. Well, a tree planted 20 years ago should start bearing fruit from now. A girl born 20 years ago should be thinking of finishing school a few years, get married. But when you come to think of Panel as a, a place God gave to us, a church, a people, and just for me, a few years ago when I came for the first time, as I look at from the choir section this morning to the end of the choir, the whole congregation, pastor, and visitors were less than this when I first came here. No direction, 
no much thought of tomorrow because the leader was facing a battle between kill him or survive. And he waded through it, lived out of those days and years of turbulences and trials and made his choice. I will go forward and not die. Can I hear you all say, I will go forward? And not die. I will leave to preach the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Somebody shout hallelujah. I want to just make that remark to say that it is not the same church that was here. As a matter of fact, there was no church here 20 years ago in this very place we are now. When I came here for the first time, I could count with my two hands lifted how many cars parked in the front. 20 years later, I was saying to Dr. Root on the way just now, we were looking for a place to come in. I said, Dr. Root, first and foremost, the house we are now, we were in there. The church we have now, it wasn't there. These cars were in there. The God of impossibility has possibilitized it. And the God of miracle brought it from where it was hiding. And I'm telling you, there's something in store for you, and the best is yet to come. Yes. This 20th anniversary. Let's give the Lord a hand. Oh, shout it again. Hallelujah. One more time. 20 years ago, we didn't have a real pastor. I had a man who had love for God. He didn't know the difference between being a pastor or being a businessman. He never knew that there was anything called bishop. No. And the wife didn't want to marry a bishop. <laughs> but 20 years later, to God be the glory. Amen. This man has now seen the world front and back and have made his choice. To go forward is the only choice. No going backward. On behalf of Church of God Mission Worldwide, my wife our children, which one of them, the senior of our four biological children, is here playing this morning with the choir. <coughs> All the millions of our members, the thousands of pastors, the hundreds of bishops in 42 nations, and the 35 million charismatic Pentecostal believers in Nigeria bring you, Bishop Reed, our heartfelt gratitude to God and congratulations to you and your team. To you, Peter, and your dear wife, and to all ministers, and Dr. Collins, Dr. Medry, and Mother Ruth, and Caroline, and all the rest of you, we salute you. 20 years ago, there was no German preacher in this church. This morning, we have German preacher, Hollandians, uh, different Dutch preachers. We have uh, Swede preachers. We have different believers from different backgrounds, all in one place, just saying one thing, is the dawning of a new day. Amen. Say big hallelujah. hallelujah. Father, while we rejoice for what you have done, we look up to you for what you are going to do. Greater and greater to the praise and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. amen. Everybody say amen. amen. God bless you. Thank you very much. Be seated. Just in case you know, you want to know where Dr. Colin got so much dancing at. This is not the Colin I knew 12 years ago. He was a quiet, humble. <laughs> who used to sing, how can it be the my love? To see him this morning, jubilantly singing, the dawning of a new day. On the 18th of October, I just came from America on the 16th. I went to a place to preach on the 17th. And on the 18th, I had invitation to go to another city to preach. And as I got to that city, a little church we just established 
run by a former honorable minister asked me to come and speak and declare the ministry inaugurated. And I want you to turn with me to Matthew chapter 28. Not Matthew read now, but Matthew Bible. <laughs> Matthew 28. The Lord dropped these words in my heart. Matthew chapter 28, the last chapter of the book of Matthew. And you will read with me verse 1, if you find it. If you don't know where to find Matthew, ask Revelation where it is. You'll be told. Matthew 28 verse 1, everybody, want to go. In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulchre. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning and his raiment white as snow. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. That's where we got the song. So on the 19th of October, the Lord told me to turn it to a song. Now for every one of you, the devil sat on their progress. They ate through the power of the Holy Ghost was going to quake and no power can withstand the new you. Did you understand that simple English? The new you now, no darkness can hide you. It's the dawning of a new day for you and the family. That's what God said. And uh, the people in my car, about seven of us were in my car. And I said, the Lord said I should just turn this thing to a song. It has come. We are not waiting for the dawning of a new day. When I was here a few weeks ago, this addition wasn't there. Today, it is here. It's the dawning of a new day. When I was here a few weeks ago, this flower wasn't here. This altar was not like this. The atmosphere wasn't even like this. There's joy, there's peace, there's radiance, there's happiness in every heart and in all faces that I can see this morning. Oh, you can tap your chest and say, it's the dawning of a new day for me. Please say it well. All right? If you don't know how to say point your hand to me and say it to me. Say it that way. No, me, not you. Me. I say point your hand to me and say it. One, two, go. Uh -huh. Now, you love me? I didn't hear you. Did you love me? Now, the Bible says, love your neighbor as yourself. Now, point your hand to your chest and say it to yourself. Amen. Amen. Since three or four weeks that our bishop told me that I will have the opportunity of sharing with our family here on this 20th anniversary, I went home. I got to Nigeria seven days ago and I've been to six states in Nigeria holding crusade and preaching one and a half night, one and a half night, one and a half night in five spots and rounded up last night after 11 in Lagos before I boarded the plane. The journey that we have stepped in, our journey, this one that this ministry has stepped in now, is the only road that the car have no reverse gear. Forward ever and backward never. And the Lord said to me, teach when you get there on what I intend to do. 20 years from now, whether you believe in prophecy or not, whether you are a believer or not, whether you are an atheist, a journalist of the worst order, a septic, a cynic, 20 years from now, this very people, these ones here now, will not be on this same location. God is taking us forward. Do you believe me? Yes. You believe in the word of God? Yes. So the Lord said to me, read these scriptures and tell them what I intend to do. So I picked up my pen and wrote the scriptures that God gave me. And uh, I decided to start this morning by taking it like an English preacher, if I were, 
That's what I would have done. And that's what I want to try to do, to be like an Englishman this morning. <laughs> so, turn with me to Second Peter. Is Peter here? Yeah, the second of him. Second Peter, chapter 1. And reading in verse says 5 to 8. But the text itself starts from verse 3. And Peter, the apostle, said these words. According as his divine power, he, God, had given unto us all. I love the word us all. Say us all. Us all. I didn't hear you. Us all. God has given to us all all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that had called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature of God, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Let me say that for example. A few years ago, Bishop Reed was trying to fit into a system. An already colonized system. A system that had been existing before he was born. He thought he could come in and bring a revolution. And as God will have it, his revolution brought him rejection. His mouth was too wide. If you don't save the pulpit, you cannot save the pew. He wanted to correct the pulpit, and the pulpit sent him out. Many times, when we are in a place we are not called to be, God has a way of sending us out of the place. You may not do wrong before they just say, we don't want to see you here. You say, I didn't steal, I didn't lie. You don't need to steal or lie for us not to need you. We just want you out. There are people like that that God set aside. You can't fit into what is not designed for your life. You may like to be there. If God sees that you insist on staying there, He brings somebody who looks at your forefathers and says, What are you doing here? The first time I saw this man, never met him from Adam to Eve and uh, Abraham. <laughs> I just finished preaching and under heavy anointing. About 60 people at the stage. I think about 55 of them were on the floor when I started preaching by the power of the Holy Spirit. And then here came this man to come and say, I love what I saw this morning. And I said, what are you doing here? You are not for this place. Get out. He looked at me and said, why? And then he asked me, what are you doing here? I said, I was invited. I'm not like you. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> he said, what do you mean? I said, I don't mean anything. You don't? I said, you don't belong to this place. Get out. I think he called his wife. And they began to talk. And he said, can you visit me? I said, who are you? He said, um, Michael, I'm Reed. I live in Brentwood. I said, I don't visit anybody. I just came to do what God sent me to do. He said, I'll be very grateful before you leave. Just spend one evening with us. Then he tempted me and said, I will take you to Chinese restaurants. <laughs> So, well, it was not Chinese restaurant, but I liked it. Chinese restaurant is better than hamburger. <laughs> if you want to live long, eat good food. So I said, look, I'll try. I'll come here. So we came here, and we arrived here. I, I looked. Where, where did he say we are going? He said, a church. Come. We got inside. The people were jumping like frog. <laughs> and they took all the chairs out, singing. I said, oh, no wonder that's why they drove him away. <laughs> We're in England because all we knew in England and churches in England in those days was many are cold and few are frozen. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what it in the Bible? Or did the Bible say many are cold and few are chosen? <laughs> but in England, many are cold and few are frozen. That was what we knew in the church in England. But this man took all the chairs off. Many of the women, uh, not many, all the women removed their shoes. Danced for two hours. 
I said, God, help him to give me a microphone. Because I'm going back to London this night. <coughs> they started service 637. By 11, we were still here. When I left, the Lord said, that's what I want to establish in England. A rejoicing church where there's no room for the devil. A place where nobody takes microphone. I said, since two weeks, the devil beat me down, lost my job, lost my husband, lost my wife, lost my... Let the Lord said, that's not what I want in England. I want a church where my name will be exalted. And the Lord said, from now, father him. Well, for a white man to give birth to a, a black child is good. But for a black man to give birth to a white child is very difficult. <laughs> Especially if he's a stubborn one. <laughs> so I said, Lord, you know, when you say, when Peter says, come on. If I could stand up, if, if, he say, if Peter said, that's my daughter, that's what I said loud. Now, that's my daughter. What's, his name? What's her name? Ify. It's easy for you all to say, oh, he's so kind. He adopted her. He's helping to take care of her. But if I say, this is my son. Stand up, son. So many things go through your head in one minute. Yes or no? Yes. So, how did he? What did you say he is to you? That's my son. Mr. Clemens is my son. It's harder for you to accept than when he says, that's my daughter. Because by his pointing, that's my daughter, your first thing is that he's very kind. He's doing her good. He's paying her school fees. He's taking care of her. But if I say, that's my son, the rejection is, how can a black man, which I'm not, only you, your eye told you that. <laughs> I'm not black. And this is not a white man. This is a man of God. Are you white? <laughs> Brother White, how are you? This is white. Are you like this? The day you will find what your color is, you will know your calling. People who busy too much about their colors never discover their callings. They are so busy looking at their skin, so they lose their skin. So I said, okay, Lord, but you know, for a, a person of my skin to give birth to a big man like this, dog, I said, it's going to be hard. He said, no. Just be patient with him. Give him time to ask questions. And for seven years, I said, son, let's go to Africa. Oh, no, 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 no. I said, you see, Father, I told you I, you're not going to listen. <laughs> Seven years. I come and come. You come. Come and see. No? I've been to Ghana. I've been to Uganda. Those are the only two places known in Africa. One is for monkey. The other one for Kenke. <laughs> so... No, no. So one day I called Ruth. I said, Dr. Ruth, if your husband didn't follow me, this is my last invitation. I'm not coming here anymore. So the wife said to him, let's go and see. He said, no, we went to Ghana before. What are we going to see? I said, Dr. Reed, let's go and see. And one day, first time, almost five years ago, only for him to live there and vow to God, I will never be the same again. And to the glory of God, four years now, this is not the same again. Amen. Amen. Go ahead, give the Lord a hand. All right, now turn to your Bible, verse 5. And beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, add to virtue knowledge, add to knowledge temperance, add to temperance patient, add to patient godliness, add to godliness brotherly kindness, add to brotherly kindness charity. Thank you, darling. If these things be in you and abound, 
They make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Say with me, add. Add. A-D-D means what? Add. Say it loud. Add. A-D-D means what? Add. And add means what? <laughs> Plus. What you have before. Get another one. And then Jesus accepted this challenge in John chapter 6. John chapter 6, Jesus is speaking in verse 39. John 6, 39. Look, listen to what Jesus said here. And this is the Father's will, which has sent me. John chapter 6, verse 39. This is the will of him that sent me. That everyone, sorry, verse 39. And this is the Father's will which has sent me. That of all which he had given me, I should lose nothing. But should raise it up again at the last day. And this is the will of him that sent me. That everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. All that the Father has given me lost, lose nothing. The will of God for your life and my life is addition. Luke 6, 38. Give, it shall be given to you good measure of praise and shaking together. Matthew 6, 33. Kingdom of God first after all the stories. All of that thing shall be added unto you. God is the God of plus. God is the God of addition. God wants Panel as a church. Not only to get to where you are now. But to live from where you are now. To a future of pleasantness. A future of greater height. A future of Thank you, Lord, for all you have done. But thank you for what you are going to do. A ministry where, whereas in the past, one man did the major praying. But a ministry where Isaiah 8, 18 shall now come to effect. Behold, I and the children. Dr. Colin, you owe me this banner. I must take it home when I come next two weeks. I have been preaching that now for 25 years. It's the slogan of all our TV promotion. Behold, I and the children whom the Lord has given me are for signs and for wonders from the Lord of hosts. That is going to be what will make this man live longer. When everyone in the choir is stopped on the way, when I was here last time, you already are aware that for at least 25 years now, God have used me to raise nine people from the dead. On Tuesday this last week, we were driving from Benin to Abuja. Suddenly I saw we have multiple people gathered. My people will see this on TV tonight and attest to it when I get home. A great crowd of people gathered. My car was sirening, driving all of that car from the side of the way. And suddenly I saw a crowd and wailing and people shaking. I told my driver and the police, I said, clear the car. Let's see what's happening there. I got out of the car, my continent changed. What happened? They said, a bike, motorbike, knocked someone down. He's dead. And the man who knocked him down ran away. And they were trying to resuscitate him. He gave up. The white eyeball came up, lying lifeless on the ground. I said to the whole crowd, so I said, give way. I bent my knee. He hasn't died for an hour. He hasn't died for 30 minutes. But if you die, it doesn't matter when you die. You die. Come on, because the thing that the English doctor said, how long was he dead? He was sleeping. I pray that everybody in the mortuary will be sleeping. <coughs> you understand? You, you, you go too much into zimisms, the questions. Somebody who is dead is dead. When I died three days ago, I died a minute ago. When the heart stopped, it's finished. If it takes you three days to bury him, he's dead. If it takes you 10 minutes to know, he's dead. 
And this man was satisfied there. The crowd were crying for two things. Number one, he's a poor man. Number two, the man who knocked him down, who should pay the bill for his burial, escaped. But here came a man who can pay no bill. And I parked my car. And the whole people in the story buildings on the street, that's it, Hausa, that's it. Hausa. Jesus has come, Jesus has come. Jesus. I'm not crying, but that's how they look at me. Jesus has arrived. He's not going to die again. I took him by hand. I looked at him. I said, in the name of Jesus, you spirit that departed, come forth. Now live in Jesus' name. I opened his mouth and I said, ha. that man jumped up. The whole street went. <laughs> and they began to clap and sing and rejoice and dance. And one of the women who was there, who was weeping when this man fell, he said, why did this man not have this accident an hour ago or one hour later when the archbishop would have passed? He said his destiny has it that he will not die by accident. That's why the archbishop passed. Today, I'm sure that at least 50 people from that street will be at the church who saw that raising of the dead. God is a miracle walking God. What God raised you for, you are still, you have just been in preparatory stage. We are about to move now to the new dawning day of greater things, to the glory of God. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. salvation but to make known him whom we have known to other people who have not known him <laughs> can i hear you say amen? amen so here we are jesus said everything god has given me none will be lost rather i will add more and raise it up more can i hear you say amen, amen. now the scripture that i brought from home Job chapter 8. Job chapter 8. Job, if you get to the last book of Psalm, begin to turn back. 
you'll find Job very soon. Job, the eighth chapter. Turn with it quickly. Turn to it quickly. Turn to it quickly. Verse 6. Job 8, 6. If thou wert pure and upright, surely now he would awake for thee and make the habitation of thy righteousness prosperous. Though thy beginning was small, yet thy later end you greatly increase. Say with me, though my beginning was small, yet my later end shall greatly increase. Oh, say to your neighbor, you will increase. Your later end shall increase. Don't be afraid. Tell somebody, your later end shall increase. Tell it to one more person. Don't tell someone you have not told. Say it. Say it. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. All right. Isaiah. Sorry. Jeremiah 29. Jeremiah. Jeremiah. Brother Jeremiah. Twenty-nine. Look at the scripture this morning. Verse four. Thus said the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, unto all that are carried away captive, whom I have caused to be carried away from Jerusalem to Babylon. Every time I look at Pinell Church, many of you are now in Brentwood area, and many of you live in Costa Greens Road. By coming here on a visit, but now you are buying houses, carried captive by a church who believe in seizing people from wrong direction to right direction. Some of you left London when you heard of how terrible this church was. You came here to look and now you find a terrific church. From terribleness to terrificness. Now what? By your captivity, God says, I captured you and sent you to Babylon. But when you get to Babylon, where you are carried and captive, verse 5, build ye houses and dwell in them. Plant ye gardens and eat the fruit of them. Take ye wives, ye, ye wives, not you, and beget sons and daughters, and take wives for your sons, sons, not your son, and give your daughters to husband, that they may bear sons and daughters, that ye may be increased there and not diminish. Say increase. increase. Don't diminish. God said, wherever my hand governed to take you to, if I get there, I settle you. Don't be a stranger for three years in Germany. Don't be ten years. That's the good thing Bishop Reed and I love about Dr. Abraham. He got to Germany with his skin like this. He looked at his skill. He looked at his color. He looked at his color. He looked at his calling. He decided to become a German. Possessor of where God took him to. Today, he's a German by resident and by acceptance, by choice. Now, doing a mighty work in Germany that many Germany and Germans are not able to do. <coughs> Having a house to live, car to ride, wife and children, all his children, German. When you stop looking at where you are now as a visitor, the sooner it will be better for you. Because every time you think, I'm visiting, I'm in Panel for 10 years, I'm just visiting. That should not be your theology. Your theology is that God brought me here. I'm going to be established. Is anybody here what I'm saying? Yes. Build houses. Say houses. houses. Plant 
gardens. Gardens. Say gardens. gardens. God wants you to get yourself established. When God takes you from a place to another place, shut you down. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? Yes. Then begin to think of houses, lands, gardens, plant and inhabit. Possess the land. Do something for the land. Then he said, when you settle down, increase and not diminish. If you came here with 2,000 pounds, get another job that will turn it to 20,000 pounds. If you came here with a, a dead, unwilling to move car, buy a brand new one. If you came here bachelor, marry a wife. If you came here spinster, get a man among the choir. Say, you, God is going to make you marry me. Amen. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mahaka bosoyododo. Kamahaka soyododo. Oh, yeah. Possess him. Everybody may need him. You take him. Is that a good English? Yeah, one man may be needed by ten girls. But one should say, that's mine. The one that says he's mine is the one that's going to marry Build houses. When you think of panel, think of a place that will not diminish, but a place that will increase. Can I hear you say increase? increase. Do your beginning was small. Yet, oh Maria Messiah. Yet your letter answer greatly. Mosi Say increase. increase. Build a new house. Last year, I went to see Dr. Collins' house. He was renovating to a new home. I liked it, but I'm giving him two years more. He'll buy a bigger one and rent that one out. You say, what do you mean? Increase. Say increase. increase. There are people that are frightened by increase. But anytime you refuse to go up, you cannot fail to go down. Anytime you refuse to be well, you cannot fail to be sick. Anytime you refuse to be prosperous, you cannot fail to be poor. Think. Think. Forward. 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 Everybody say forward. Forward. One more time. Forward. Increase. Say that. Increase. Diminish not. Diminish not. Increase. 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 Diminish not. Diminish not. Increase. 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 Diminish not. Diminish not. The Bible says a good man liveth an inheritance for his children's children. Not diminishing, but increasing all the time. Psalm 4, verse 7. Psalm 4, verse 7. Then quickly, Psalm 62, verse 10. Look at the fourth Psalm. P S A L M S. Psalms. 4. Psalms 4. Look at what he says in verse 6. There be many that say, Who will show us any good? Lord, lift thou up the light of thy countenance upon us. Thou hast put gladness in my heart more than in the time that their corn and their wine increased. Not only you have a house now, but in that your house, there are gardens where there should be corn and wine that will not diminish. But do what? Increase. Psalm 62. So that was not only your body now, we are talking of your business. Begin to think of bigger business. The devil say you don't have money, it's a lie. Psalm 62. Verse 11. God has spoken once. Twice have I heard this. That power belonged unto God. Is that in your Bible? Everything you are afraid to reach out for belongs to God. Psalm 24. The earth is the Lord's. The fullness thereof. Power belong to God. All you believe for belong to God. 
They, it is said, money power. It is said, power is influence. But above all, power belongs to God. Somebody say amen. amen. Now let's look at Proverbs chapter 1. Proverbs. After the book of Psalm, Proverbs. Let's see what God wants us to become. Proverbs chapter 1. First book of Proverbs. Panel, that's my challenge to you. A wise man, verse 5, we hear and will increase learning. Not only to know, but increase learning. All you have known, add more. All you are aware of, add more. You have virtue, add. You have love, add. You have patience, add. Charity, add. A wise man here, and will increase learning. And a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsel. Proverbs chapter 9, verse 9 to 11. Look at your Bible. Proverbs 9, 9, 10, 11. Give instruction to a wise man. And he will be yet wiser. Teach a just man. And he will increase in learning. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And the knowledge of the holy is understanding. For by me thy days shall be multiplied. And the years of thy life shall be increased. Say, so I'm not going to die young. I'm hearing you. I'm listening. I say, I'm listening. Mother Reed, stand up. Stand up. Many people know your son more than they know you. Because he's your pastor. But you can still remember the first time you took soap and sponge. I'm right. I'm right. I'm right. I'm right. You still remember how he cried. And some of it, huh? He didn't cry. He kept quiet. Praise God. He's, he's crying more now. <laughs> but... What I'm saying is that over 50 years ago, you can still remember exactly how he behaved. But now you look at him, you say, are you sure? But you say, I, I know he is, but could it be that son? Inside your mind, you are thinking, how did God do this? The grace of God took him from his chosen line of life, his way of decision, God took his head, gave him a new direction. Today, you are the vicious mother. By the grace of God, my future shall not be cut short. Your future shall not be cut short. Amen. Is anybody hearing? You shall greatly increase in years. You will see your children's children. Yeah, you already seen your son. And your granddaughter, now you have a great granddaughter. You, because you refuse to die. <laughs> Not only money, our years will increase to serve God the more. Not only in years, but our finances shall also increase. Not only in where we are, but around us, our generation shall be proud that we are born. Can somebody say big amen? amen. Proverbs chapter 11. <sighs> increase. Somebody say increase. increase. I didn't hear you. Increase. One more time. Increase. increase. Look at the 24. Verse. Proverbs 11, 24. There is he that scattereth and yet increaseth. And there is he that we hold it more than his meat, but tendereth to poverty. Say, that's not me. That's not me. Even in your giving, you will increase. <coughs> and when you start to say, no more giving, he said, you tender to poverty. Not only in receiving, even in giving, we shall increase. And I hear you say, Amen. 
Now let's look at the real text of the day. Psalm 115. Psalm 115. Verse. Let's stand up and read together a few verses before you sit down. We are going to read from verse 1. To 10, then I will ask you to sit down. Make sure everybody near you is. Thank you. Make sure nobody is sitting near you. No matter how old they are, no matter how weak they are. Somebody who dropped a letter on my seat, or we shall read that I got just now. Please, when we close, see me. Psalm 115, verse 1 to 10. Let's read together. Not unto us, O Lord, not unto us, but unto thy name give glory for thy mercy and for thy truth's sake. Wherefore should the hidden say, Where is now their God? But our God is in the heavens, and he had done whatsoever he had pleased. Their idols are silver and gold, the works of men's hands. They have mouths, but they speak not. I believe this message is blessing you. Please visit and share videos on anointedtube.com, the world database of Christian preachers, to help us reach 100 million people. The message continues after this video about Anointed Tube. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. But they walk not, neither speak they through their throat. They that make them are like unto them. So it's everyone that trusted in them. Israel trusted out in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. Verse 10. O house of Aaron, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. Verse 11. Then you are going to see that. Ye that fear the Lord, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. Be seated. And now listen to me. <laughs> Verse 12. The Lord have been mindful of us. The Lord. 
We shall read, Pastor Peter, if nobody cared for this ministry, God's mind had been full of us. God did not treat us the way men treated us. When I read this verse first time years ago, God's mind is full of me. God is mindful of us. Inside his mind is me every time. It's you every time. Call him when God thinks, think of calling the house, calling the house, calling the house, calling the house, Abraham. Thinks of all. God's mind has no evil. God's mind is full of us. In Isaiah, he said, I know the thought I have towards you. They are the thought of good and not of evil. To give you an expected thing. David said, the Lord have been mindful of us. He has made us and given us more than what we need. He blessed us. He will bless the house of Israel. He will bless the house of Aaron. He will bless them that fear the Lord, both small and great. Raise your right hand and say, I'm qualified. I didn't hear you. Think your hand up say, I'm qualified. Great and small, say I'm qualified. I'm qualified. Don't you think you are qualified? <laughs> when God said, I will bless both great and small. Is your name removed? Yes. Are you part of it? Yes. That's how I got to where I am now. When I found that God is no respecter of person. He will bless both great and small. A man was trying to introduce me yesterday, Bishop Reed, to preach in a dedication service of his new 10,000 seat in church in Lagos. He spent 21 minutes to try to introduce me until I began to cry. He said, this man, he has climbed some walls that these days only few can see that wall and survive, not to talk of climbing it. He said, this man is the caterpillar God used to clear all the difficult storms in Christian world. He said, we are now using roller and grader to clear the grass. He didn't let us see the ugliness of the thickness of the forest. God used him to remove all this time before God called us. Because if we were called, when he was called, we would have been buried by now. When he got halfway, I began to cry. And I really thought, if God didn't raise me, first time I went to Kenya, 4,000 people were in the service. And they got 15 shillings. Jesus. And the missionary came with 20 bags of secondhand clothes, secondhand shoes. Some of the shoes have holes that can take two rabbits. <laughs> and then to worsen it all, I got to the tea section. They were used bag of teas brought from Kansas to Africa for preachers. And I carried all those things and threw it through the window. The missionaries have not forgiven me from now. The reason they have not forgiven me is that they are missionaries. Yeah. <laughs> I said, how many of you would have been glad if God gave us second hand Jesus? And I told the African, you rather die than to depend on foreign youth shoe and use tea back. Go back to farm. You are not called by God. Let farm call you. Buy cutlass and farm. Eat. You shouldn't be waiting every 30 days. They were sending them seven shillings, a man with four children, because they have been trained. If I don't get it, I cannot do anything. In the same service, I led in the chorus. I didn't know what we sang this morning. I would have sang it the dawn of a new day. I led in the chorus. We got 18 pounds from the same people. And I paid all the pastors one pound ten, one pound ten, one pound ten. I said, from today, you will not get less than that. Go and preach Christ. If you preach the risen Christ, he will feed you and your family. Today, some of them have cars to the glory of God. God has to use somebody to change the destiny of people. This is why Panel Church is established. Not to shake you to righteousness, make you jerk and fall and fall and laugh. But to kick you up and say, God will bless us. Both great and small. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. As I drove in just now, look at the parking lots. All those brand new cars. For me to think that 12 years ago, 13 years ago, when I came here, 
14 years ago, there were not up to five cars. Today, ushers are busy looking for where to park cars. Increase, not diminish. When I came here, 14 years ago, 13 years ago, no choir. Look at today. The biggest choir in England. Not diminishing, but increase. And yet, the best is yet to come. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Don't diminish. Fight poverty like you fight cancer. Because poverty is worse than cancer. When cancer comes, your days are time. When poverty comes, it makes you happy. I can thank God for this, my little Volkswagen. I'm so grateful. I'm not greedy. I don't have two houses. I don't have big car. Glory be to God. It's because you are foolish. Not because God doesn't want to bless you. Because God can increase you both great and small. You can't heal the sick when you are sick. You can't clothe the naked when you are naked. The Bible says, bless the poor. If you are poor, you can't bless the poor. The Bible says, clothe the naked. If you have no clothes to wear, you can't give to the naked people. The Bible says, feed the hungry. But if you are not eating for three days, you can't give food to anybody. Increase. 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 That's how we saw the ministry of Church of God mission. From, 20, from 12 people, 7 out of 5 children. Now, I'm no more only the pastor of Church of God mission. I was telling Bishop Reed in the car. Yesterday, every Pentecostal charismatic church in Nigeria gathered in Lagos to honor me as the pastor of 35 million charismatic believers in Nigeria. I left all things behind. The price I paid is not wasted. Increase and not diminish. Daniel, what is my challenge to you as brethren? My challenge to you is, if we could get here when we knew nothing, how much can we do now that we know whom God is? Say with me, I will not diminish. I will increase. Go say build houses. Yes. Oh, as I drove past this street, last time I came here, Bishop Reed was bringing me from where we went to eat. He said, that one belonged to a brother in the church. That one belonged to a brother and sister in the church. That one belonged to a brother and sister in the church. That one belonged to a brother. I said, God, when we came here, this belonged to nobody. But today, we are possessing the land. Increase and not diminish. When our brethren came to Benin last month, which ended yesterday. Church of God Mission bought everything. We couldn't buy pin when we started. Our rent was six shillings for a year. My salary as a pastor, when they now agreed to start to pay me, was one pound ten for 30 days. Today, how great thou art. Increase and not diminish. Increase and not diminish. Bishop Reed, you rather, let me not say what I wanted to say. Rather than you decrease, let it be when you are gone, not when you are alive. Be blamed for doing too much and to have pleasure in doing nothing. If they can criticize you to fold your hand, they can send flower bouquet to your grave. That's what the world wants to do. When we pressure him, to die. But because you know whom you serve, face what God called you to do and do it the more. Look at the 14th verse. Hear these words, everybody. Psalm 115 verse 14. The Lord shall increase you more and more. Stand to your feet, everybody. Oh my God. Say, I like this. I like this. Say, I like this. I like this. The Lord, the Lord. shall Increase, increase you, you more, more, and 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 more. Say hallelujah. They have just begun to complain. They are going to complain more. The council will be canceled. If they refuse to leave the church alone, they will be canceled. Anybody that refuses to remove hand from your waist will lose hand from your body. 
because you are going to increase more and more. As you think this morning, the Lord shall bless thee more and more. Think of that for everything you are thinking of in life. That where you are now is not the greatest. It's going to increase you more and more. From 10 staff to 15 to 20 to 30 to... Begin to think of a greater thing you are going to do because your greatest fear is, how can I do it? And the good news is that it's not you, it's God. The Lord shall increase you more. Oh, raise your hand and stretch your hand and say, more, more. And, more. and more and more and more and more. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Verse 15, read it before you sit down. Ye are blessed of the Lord. Who is blessing you? I said, who is blessing you? The Lord. Which made heaven and earth. Verse 16. The heaven, even the heavens, are the Lord's. But the earth had he given to the children of men. Do you like that? Yes. You know, you thought one day you will soon die and go to heaven. He said, no, I already own heaven. You stay here. I said it the last time I came here. People used to ask me, how long are you going to live? I said, 120 years. May this year, the Lord said, don't tell anybody your age anymore. If they say, how long are you going to live? Occupy till I come. Is anybody hearing that? Yes. Why should I tell you when I'm going to die? So you begin to plan for my burial. <laughs> ask me, how long are you going to live? Long Talk long boldly, say it loud. Long Put long your hand, say, how long are you going to live? Long I'll be here till he comes back. If you come tomorrow, I'm ready. You take him 30 years' time, you meet me here. His instruction and injunction to me is occupy till I come. I'm calling, if I ever hear you sing, I fly away, I deal with you. No member of the choir should fly away. Stay till Jesus come. No member of the choir should sing soon and very soon. Those who are going soon, let them go. We'll meet them there. The trumpet shall sound, the dead shall rise first, but we which are alive shall be cut off to meet him in glory. Jesus died that we may live. Increase more and more and more. I believe this is the vision of this ministry. Never to diminish. The Bible says, follow those who by faith and righteousness have obtained. The only ministry this ministry should imitate is a living ministry. A complaining caricature Ugly storytelling ministry, blamer of the successful, is not your equal. When you hear where God is moving with people, borrow the idea they have, add it to your own. You never diminish but increase. Now I hear you say hallelujah. hallelujah. And so the Lord said to me, when you get to Penel on the 20th anniversary, pray this prophetic prayer. Increase more and more, and more, and more. Let the earth see his glory, and let your glory cover the earth as the water cover the sea. No dying for this ministry we shall increase more, and more, and more, and more. No poverty, no setback, no diminishing. As I, Jeremiah put it very well, say, when you possess that land, leave it for your children, that they <coughs> increase and diminish no. That's the hope of this ministry. And I'm looking forward that not too long from now, we are going to move from here. Can I hear you say amen? amen? I saw the plaque you made. I saw the gift that was given to the bishop as map of the world. My heart has been filled with joy for what you have done. But I decided, I said to myself, you know, it's the greatest thing we can do for this ministry is to begin to think of moving from here. Don't you think that's a wise thing to do? Yes. I say, don't you think that's a wise thing to do? Yes. Put your Bible down. Join hand with somebody on your left hand. Join hand with somebody on your left hand. Oh, join hand with someone. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. 
20 years we've seen your move. 20 years we've seen your hand. 20 years God has proved he's not the God of the dead but the God of miracles. 20 years we can now say of our truth is the dawning of a new day. Yes, we pass through difficult times. Yes, sickness came, shook us, almost killed us. We are alive. 20 years later, the grave that the enemy dug is covered. And we who live, live by the grace of the Son of God. 20 years later, we who we are not a people, we are now the people of God. 20 years later, who are you have become? How are you, sir? 20 years later, men from east, west, north, and south can now worship the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. 20 years later, we are no more eating the crumbs. We are sitting on the table with the Lord, dining in joy. 20 years later, we can boldly, boastfully say, God loves us. He has blessed us more and more and more and more. To you be the glory for that which you have done. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, I present this ministry to you as a living sacrifice. You say to all we have before, add more. And by your power, supernatural grace, I'm asking that this ministry shall grow from glory to glory and from power to power. That 20 years from now, children yet unborn shall say in their generation, they did this. Thank you for honoring us with your power and with your might. Bless your work that we may gladly say, we are the people of God whom he has blessed more and more. For every disease, for every sickness, for every pain, I take authority and dominion. From the crown of your head to the sole of your feet, now be loose in the name of Jesus. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh. God is good all the time. can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. 
simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preacher's pictures, click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Idausa is my father. My first encounter with uh, Archbishop Idausa, he was doing a big crusade uh, in the center of Accra, which is called Circle. He said, if your faith say yes, God cannot say no. Idausa is a man that believe with God, all things are possible. He had an unwavering faith. He had an unshaking faith. He had an unbreaking faith. He had faith in God. He saw God as he's talking to a faithful father. He saw God like his son will see a father who he trusts that is faithful. Whatever I ask my daddy to do, he will do it. That was a Dowser's level of faith, beyond mass uh, explanation. He had faith. Spiritual a person, yet he was so human in nature. A man who reached out to everyone, the high, and the law in society. A man who rubs shoulders with presidents and the highest of dignitaries you can think of in society. I feel very blessed because the Lord has called me to preach the word of God in Africa and particularly in Nigeria. Um, I've been here with my husband 40 years now. Uh, it, it's a blessing. And it's particularly been a blessing to work with Papa Idahosa and Mama Idahosa. When you talk about legacy, I remember traveling with Archbishop Idahosa to Kaduna for the consecration of Bishop Oyudepo. I think it's Faith Liberation Chapel. I remember it as if it is today. And uh, Archbishop said, we are going. And when we got to Benin Airport, uh, Okada, uh, that's chief, Igbenidion had given him an aircraft. So we flew from Benin City Airport to Kaduna. And I carried, and it was there he told in the preaching, he said, This is my son. At the point, at that time, I didn't really know Bishop Edipo. This must have been early in the 80s or something. And then, many, a couple of weeks after, Bishop Edipo came to Church of God Mission Sunday evening service. And I remember the first message he preached, it was on the prodigal son. The man brought me out from the dungeon. Papa Idahosa was, he was a man full of energy and vision. Uh, he, he, he was always getting 
moving on from one project to another and often when he started a new project we whites, we or we bulls would say why is he doing that? We couldn't see the vision at all. We thought, hmm, this is very funny. But then sometime later we would realize, oh yes, okay, I see why he's done that now. And I was a Muslim that I gave my life to Christ. In Ghana, there was this kind of freedom of worship. There were a lot of Muslims. And among those people that by the grace of God, I gave my life to Christ. And I wanted to go to Bible school when I felt the call of God upon my life. And unfortunately for me, at that particular time, with the Assemblies of God Ghana, there was no space for women to go to Bible school. So my pastor called me and said, he wants me to go to Nigeria and meet with Indahosa because there is a room in that particular ministry for women. And I traveled to Nigeria by the grace of God. On getting there, I met with the Archbishop, my first time of meeting the Archbishop in Dahosa of Church of God Mission International. It's what an awesome privilege it was to see this man of faith and boldness. I will never forget the Onicha Crusade. At that time, the head of state in Nigeria had passed the law that nobody should do open air crusades. And Archbishop said he went to pray and said, God, God, what they are saying, and God asked him, what do you want? He said, I want to do crusade. God said, go ahead and do your crusade. So he sent us, I was part of the uh, advanced team, to go and paste posters all over Odicha. And we went to put posters all over Odicha. And the first day of the crusade, a truckload of soldiers came. The man of faith, the man of prayer, the man of courage, the man of peace. And Archbishop mounted the platform. And, and the soldiers came with their guns. When Archbishop started preaching, they all put their guns down. When he made the altar call, they all raised their hands to receive Jesus as Lord and personal Savior. And we stood there and the whole crusade was an eye opener for us. And right there, I decided I needed to go and know more from this man. Fortunately, he was offering scholarship for people who want to attend Bible school in Benin, All Nation for Christ Bible Institute. And so that particular year, I uh, requested, I wrote, and fortunately, I was invited to come. So uh, we went to Nigeria to begin. Uh, my class, Actually, I went there in 79. My class started in 1980. And uh, we went through the Bible training, and it was powerful. We were all charged up. He started uh, the Word of Faith schools. He started the Christian Hospital, Faith Mediplex. He started Benson Hose university all those and well he's he's a man we can't we can't forget he was a great example to us and i thank god it's particularly good for us whites british because in britain uh people are rather skeptical these days You'll not find many people who are really born again Christians. Um, people of faith are few in Britain, but if we can come here and our faith can be uh, increased, can be inspired, particularly by the things that Papa did, we are blessed. Let me share this. And I think for those who were around in Church of God Mission at that time, we traveled to Washington for Jesus. John Geminis who went to Baltimore flew to New York and then flew to Lagos on Nigeria with 11 hours. And then we took Okada from Okada Air from Lagos to Benin City. It was bad weather. Brother, it was one turbulence I, I told God, as long as I'm alive, never let me face anything like this again in my travel. I'm sure Dausa and the wife Margaret were in the first class, which is only divided by a curtain because it's a 90-seater plane. 
and we took off from Lagos to Benin. It was bad weather, raining cats and dogs. We rented a storm. There were Filipino pilots. And then they said that he has lost contact. The pilot said, listen, he has lost contact with Lagos. And so he doesn't know where he is. That is ridiculous. You are supposed to be taking us to Benin. So if you, the pilot, has lost contact and you don't know where you are and it's raining cats and dogs, what do you want us to do? And when I looked through the wood, brother, I was sitting at the edge of my seat like this. I was shaking in my boots. I'd never been scared like that. I thought I was, I, it, it was a life and death situation. The plane will lose, dive, turn left, turn right. When I looked through the curtain, I was looking at the reaction of the Archbishop Idausa. We say, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And then one time he stood up in the aircraft. He lifted his hand. I will never forget. He said, God, this is what he said. God, you called me and you didn't say I would die in a plane crash. My mission is not finished. My assignment is not over. We call the enemy to order and command the devil to back up. Now you pilot, you better find out where you are and take us to our destination in the name of Jesus. And he sat down. Five minutes and the pilot said, he has made contact with Port Harcourt. Listen to this. We are supposed to be doing 30 minutes from Lagos to Benin. And the pilot, we, we landed in Port Harcourt. So we, were the, we have lost our way. We would have ended up in the sea. I will never forget. We landed in Lagos. It was still raining. That is where the testimony is. Mama, I was there. You can ask her. I told Papa, can I please go for bus? Because I was afraid. Can we get a bus so we go to Benin? He said, no. James, you don't travel like I do. I must conquer the devil today in the air. I said, what is this? <laughs> I was scared. I said, Papa, you want us to die? He said, James, if I don't conquer the devil, I will not be able to travel by air. Okada gave us his gold-plated aircraft. Chief Benedion, he called him. The plane rolled out from the hangar and we went by air to Benin. And that Sunday evening, he made me go to church and give a testimony. He said, Ghana boy. He calls me Ghana boy. I came and said, give them your testimony. You coward. <laughs> Another powerful miracle was when the witches in the whole world decided to come and have a meeting in Benin City. And Archbishop said, not when he's here. There won't be any such meeting. The chief priest then was summoned. His name, Chief Ebohon, because he was a representative of the witches then. And he said, the meeting, nobody, not even God could stop the witches from meeting. Then daddy said, or papa said, Yes, God will not waste his time to stop you because I'm here to stop you. God has put me here to stop you. And guess what? That meeting never took place in Benin City. When you are with him one on one, you will feel an aura that defies definition. You know, it's as if you are in the presence of God, of a deity, of something that is beyond where you are. You know, uh, he never celebrated mediocrity. He never took no for an answer. He dared to go where nobody wants to go or everybody feared to go. He was a man that believe in venturing where others fear to venture. He was a trailblazer. I remember those days, for example, this television ministry that's becoming anything today, it also started it in 1974, 75. I'm honored to have been one of his sons. And uh, by the grace of God, I think that um, that sign, wonder, anointing, and his boldness. I was. I did a meeting for Dr. Maurice Serrillo in 2010, and just before I spoke in his world conference, they said, uh, "Oh, miracles don't happen in America because they have a lot of doctors." It happens in the third world. 
Well, when I took the microphone, I just shared my testimony. 23 cripples gave me their sticks and began to walk. Um, that kind of boldness to decree and declare, I took it from the late Archbishop. I believe in the transference of spirits, and I believe strongly, like God told Moses, I will take off the spirit that is upon you, and I will put it upon the 70. I'm one of the people who took of that spirit of signs and wonders from the Archbishop. Making a movie of the Archbishop will really, really help the next generation. Because the young preachers and the young ministers that are coming up have no clue of who he was. It, I mean, he will still be preaching and cripples will start walking. Um, that was an awesome man of faith. I remember whilst we were in school, he went to visit and it was shown on TV. Um, he went to visit Kenneth Copeland. And when he got there, they, he was supposed to have gone the previous day, but he arrived late. So they announced, when they announced that the Archbishop Idahosa has arrived, six cripples got out of their wheelchairs. That is how anointed uh, Papa was. We must keep his legacy alive. Idahosa is dead to some people, but to us, to me, Idahosa lives. Hello, I am Bishop Margaret Benson Idahosa, the wife of the late Archbishop Benson Idahosa that did wonders while he was on earth here. Early in the morning when I rise, I will lift up my eyes. Now let me let you know how I got to meet him. You know, in those early years, he used to ride his bicycle with some trucks going from street to street, and one of it was my street. And every time he comes, we call him pastor. Pastor, he was young then, about 21 or 22. He was very, very young, but he didn't mind. He was not ashamed of the gospel because he knew that that was the power of God in his life. And one of these days, he was riding past, and people were crying in my house. <laughs> and he just stopped, brought his, brought his uh, small little Bible out and came in, just uh, uh, with it through the crowd. And he came and I said, Pastor, please, today is not like any other day. Somebody just died. <laughs> He said, ah, I have been riding my bicycle all through. <laughs> Till this time, it was about four o'clock. And I want to raise somebody. I say, he, please, I beg you. Don't, don't make a mockery of your God. He said, no, 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 no. I want to wake him up because God has told me in the book. Then he opened the book and read it that, uh, uh, Behold, I have given you power to tread upon serpents, to tread upon scorpions, and to raise the dead. And I said, listen, don't make a mockery of yourself. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal that sin. Raise the dead! I said what? Am I going to like God? Again? 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 Benson, 
You mean what you say that we can raise dead person? Yes, absolutely. Have you raised dead person before? Uh, no. Why? What you say I can do it? Yes. In the name of Jesus. Hey. He said, no, 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 come and show me where the baby was. So I said, okay. I took him to the room where the baby was lying. It, it was, she, she was about uh, three years old, three or four, four years old then. And I said, listen, this baby died at about nine. And it's about four o'clock now. The baby is already changing color. The fa why, why, he, why she was not being buried at this time is that the father has to go to the secretariat to get a death certificate. And he said, oh, there's no need for that now. Let's do it. Let's do it. I said, how? How are you going to do it? And he said, okay, go out if you don't want to see, see me do it. But, uh, you know, as a stubborn child, then I stood at the, I stood at the door. I stood at the door with my back laid at the door. One, one eye on this side and one eye on the front door. And he prayed. Child. Be healed. I will bring to you an offering. After he prayed, he asked me, What is the name of the child? What is the girl's name? I said, It's Inwarata. I'm a living testimony. I give God the glory for keep counting me among the living today. I'm a testimony that the whole world know about through my father, late Ben Sinidahosa. I was sick about two weeks. After the sick, conversion hold me. So I, I, I died. When I died, they kept me inside one room. So my people was crying, weeping. About two hours, a bit three hours later, my father come, my late Benson in the house. I said, what is happening? He told him that her daughter, their daughter has lost. They said, what happened to her? He said, she was confused. So they tried the, in the ordinary native daughter tried, they can't raise her back to life. He said, where is her now? He said, she's swallowing there. He said, he asked my father the question. He said, daddy, do you believe that the God I serve can raise him come back to life. My father said yes. So he said they should take him to the room. Then take him to where they, they lie me down. So carry me, they were praying with some of members. As they pray with God that answered by fire, hear their prayer. I come back to life. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! That is how I'm a living so today. And he just stretched his Bible and himself on that child and said, Inuata, I command you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that has empowered me to raise the dead. Now, come back to life. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Inuata, I command you, rise up! I was just peeping. And all of a sudden, the, the child that died at about 9 o'clock slays. Another made back to me after a year and three months in the womb. So my mother passed through many tribulations before she gave back to me. Many said, maybe I'm not a baby, I'm a wood, I'm this, but for God be thy glory. When they gave back to me, I'm, I'm a human being. And after they gave back to me, the devil, the useless man, raised up his ugly head to take my soul away. Do you know I took to my heels? I couldn't stand it. I couldn't wait. 
and I ran out. <laughs> with him to the mother. He said, please give this child something to eat. And everybody was surprised. Everyone was shocked. Ah, and he just left. And when he left, I, I sat down and I was thinking, what is the thing that made this man to raise this child from the dead? There must be power superpower then i wasn't a child of god my mother used to serve um, she was a princess of olokun shango and all that and i said mm, the, the the power that raised this child from the dead must be a power that surpasses the power of these graven images that has no power so the father just came and we started celebrating, but he was gone. But in the night I sat and I, I started praying and I said, God, if you were the one that raised that child up, just touch me. I have been hearing messages of salvation from here and there. Even the church I, 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 I used to go then, but I just knelt down and I said, Father, let Jesus come into my heart right now. And I need to know this power that raised this child. And that was all I prayed. I didn't know how to pray salvation prayer. But I just knelt and I said, Father, please, if you were the one that raised this child up, let come into my life and let me act and walk and believe like us. That young man that we call pastor believed, and he did this. And you know, when I finished prayer, there was an abundant joy, unspeakable joy in my spirit. And the following day, uh, we, we used to call him Brother Benson. He came and said, where is the child? We said, the child is there. And I called him to the room and I said, you know what I did last night? I did know. Uh, I, I don't know how to do it, but I just met by my bedside and I said, God, if you were the one that raised that child up, let me have a part of that power. He said, ah, you have done it. And I knelt down, he prayed, and I, and I said the, the sinner's prayer, and that was what got me into where I am now. And I'm glad. Okay, because I'm still alive, my father Benson Dalsa is still alive because I'm a living testimony. I'm glad that I, 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 I'm doing what I'm doing now because there was sign, there was wonder, there, were, there, there was miracle that got into my heart. Thank God for today and my life. I have about eight children, two guests, and two boys and six guests. He was a man that did everything by faith. I have about 10 grandchildren to the glory of God. Now I understand the, the type of joy. The Bible said that the joy that no man can give, that is the joy that Jesus gives when you give your life to him. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com
Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preacher's pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preacher's pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Thank you for taking the time to watch this powerful video of Archbishop Benson Indaosa. Archbishop Benson Indaosa was a charismatic Pentecostal preacher. He is the founder of Church of God Mission International. Archbishop Benson Indaosa was popularly referred to as the father of Pentecostalism in Nigeria. And I would like you to know that he was also my spiritual father please do not forget to share this video to bless all the people let this video go viral remain blessed hello this video is about Archbishop Bensi Idaosa his early Christian ministry testimony as a young Christian, I once heard my pastor say during a morning service that Christians could raise the dead in the name of the Lord Jesus. I believe it with my, all my heart. 
and flying around on my bicycle in those days, I went through the city of Benin in Nigeria in search of a dead person to raise to life. After five hours of hard searching, I found a compound where a little girl had died a few hours before. The corpse had been cleaned and prepared for burial. I walked boldly to the father of the child. The God whom I serve can bring your baby back to life. I told him, will you permit me to pray for the child and bring her back to life? The man was startled, but he agreed. I walked into the room and up to the bed. The child was cold and dead. With strong faith in the Lord, I called on the Lord to restore the child back to life. I turned to the corpse and called it by name. Arise in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, glory to God. The corpse sneezed heavily. Alas, the child had come back to life. God is Benson Daosa. Now, Bensi Indaosa childhood. Bensi Indaosa was born in Benin City on September 11, 1938 to a pagan parents. He was a sickly infant who was always fainting. As a result of his constant illness, his father ordered the mother to throw him in the dustbin. When he was 18, year, 18 months old, he was left on a rubbish heap to die. He was rejected by his father, sent to work on a farm as a servant, and was denied education until he was 14 years old. His education was irregular due to the poor financial status of his parents. He later took correspondence course from Britain and the United States while working in Bada Shoe Company. His conversion and call to ministry. His conversion was drastic and his calling supernatural was converted by Pastor Akos on a football field on one Sunday afternoon while playing soccer with his teammates. Thus, young Benson, young Benson became the first Benin member of Pastor Akbar's small congregation. As a young convert, he became very zealous in winning souls and in conducting outreaches in villages around Benin City. He was called to the ministry in a night vision from the Lord. I have called you that you might take the gospel around the world in my name, preach the gospel, and I will confirm my words with signs following, said the voice from heaven. The room was filled with the presence of God as Benson fell to his knees before the Lord. Wherever you want me to go, I will go. He prayed through the night renewing his vows to God and interceding for his people who were yet to hear the message of salvation. After his call, Benson launched into ministry, work preaching from village to village. The gospel of, the, of, of Jesus Christ with great power and anointing, more people confess Christ as their savior and more healings occur as he prayed for the sick. Expansion of his ministry and his credentials. Archbishop Benson Daosa, the Archbishop himself, and the founder of Church of God Mission International Incorporated with its headquarters in Benin City, Nigeria, established over 6,000 churches throughout Nigeria, Ghana before 90, 1971. Many of the ministers he supervised pastored churches of 1,000 to 4,000 people. In addition to filling the position of Archbishop of Church of God Mission, he also he, he was also president of All Nation for Christ Bible Institute, president of Idaosa World Outreach, and president of Faith Medical Center. He had positions in numerous organizations, including the College of Bishop of, Bishop of the International Communion of Christian Churches and the Ora Robot. Uh, university in Oklahoma. It also earned a diploma in divinity from Christ for the Nation Institute in Dallas, Texas, which he attended in 1971. A doctorate of divinity in 1981 from the World Faith College, New Orleans, and 
a Doctor of Law degree from Ora Robot University in March 1984. He also received another degree. He also received other degrees from the International University in Brussels, Belgium. Archbishop Benson and his wife Margaret Idaosa were blessed with four children. Idaosa Supertax. So winning was Idaosa primary concern with a motto Evangelism our Supreme Tax. He worked towards his goal of reaching the origin Nigeria, Africa, and the rest of the world with the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. As a black African, he found the doors of African countries were wide open and he ministered in over 133 countries all 123 countries all over the world. Crusade played a major role in his ministry. He was involved at least one crusade per month. A record crowd of nearly one million people a night attended his Lagos crusade in April 1985. He established the Redemption Television Ministry with a potential viewing audience of 15 million people. What leading gospel minister said about Archbishop Idaosa? According to Mrs. Gordon Frada, Lisser, President of Christ for the Nation Incorporated, Dallas, Texas, USA. I know of no young black in all Africa who is preaching, who is reaching million as Benson is in crusade with hundreds of thousands in attendance in, in, in his weekly nationwide telecast, in his Bible school, training eager students from several nations. He also conducted campaigns in Sweden, Singapore, Malaysia, Korea, Australia, and United States, where he often appeared on national religious telecast. His body for souls, his ministry of healing and miracles, even to the raising of several dead, demonstrate he is especially core of the Lord in this end time. Dr. Ben Akosa remarked, Benson Daosa is sought after by everyone in the state, from government officials to beggars. When they pose questions and explain their problem to this man, they receive instantaneous miracle solution, just as the people did in Bible days with God's prophet. The people got miraculous answer from, his, from this mighty leader of God's people, said Daniel Oris. Benin City respect and salute this great man of God even at his death. I have been with him on visit to many officials, to the governor, to the powerful Benin tribal kings. He moved with God and his people knows it. His great miracle cathedral, his headquarters sit over 10,000 in 1981. His Bible school attract upper class people from different African nations and also come from Maurice, India, uh, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, Indonesia, Singapore, Philippines, Hong Kong, Japan, Korea, the Middle East, Europe, and other nations of the world. A truly international Bible training center of dynamic faith. People know that Bishop Idaosa preached what he practiced. Dr. Idaosa evangelistic ministry has reached nations around the world. He was the first Af black African evangelist to shake Australia in a massive crusade that got national attention. His seminar have affected Christians and church leaders in many countries. I sincerely salute this man because he practiced among his own people what he preached to the world. Bensi Indaosa was a man who believed God's promises and that God's miracle provision applies to African as well as to Americans. He believed that African has a part in God's work and African will reap God's blessing. Evangelist T. S. Bond from Tulsa, Oklahoma remarked, Many who followed Idaosa's teaching have been saved from poverty and have learned to plant out of their des have learned how to plant out of their desperate need and to look to God as their divine source, thereby becoming prosperous Christian in their own land. 
Ida also rose from the rank of an ordinary man to a world leader's leadership as a pastor, a builder, a counselor, a prophet, a teacher, an apostle, an evangelist, a man of godly wisdom and of Christ-like compassion, whose ministry has blessed million, millions the world over. Idaosa was the greatest African ambassador of the apostolic Christian faith to the world. The secret of his success. Idaosa operated in faith. He had a robust faith. He believed and trusted God with a childlike faith. He once said that living a daily life of absolute faith in God is the only secret to great success. He believed God for everything. All things are possible to him that believes. He spent quality times in prayer and in the study of God's word. He said that if someone spent time studying the Bible and acting on it, people will come looking for that person for life solutions. He also, also spent time studying the works and the lives of other successful people, both in the gospel ministry and other faith of human endeavors. And he applied the principles he learned, he learned from these successful people to his life and ministry. He was very energetic, hardworking. One of the ministers who served under him said that he had never seen a man who worked as hard as Archbishop Benson Daosa. He was committed and consistent, and he had confidence in himself. He was very humble and full of godly wisdom. Archbishop Bensi Idaosa was said to be the leader of over 7 million Jesus people worldwide before he went to be with the Lord in February 1998. Now I'm going to talk about his early ministry again. As a youth, he got converted to Christianity by a certain pastor at Paul and joined the flagging congregation as one of the first members. He was very active and converted many to Christianity. After experiencing a revelation from God, calling him into ministry, he began to conduct outreaches from village to village before establishing his church in a store in Benin City. Archbishop Bensi Idaosa was well known for many notable quotable quotes, including, My God is not a poor God. Your attitude determines your, your attitude determines your attitude. It is more risky not to take risk. I am a possibilitarian. A big head without a big brain is a big load to the neck. If your faith says yes, God cannot say no. Among others, many of these messages on faith, miracle, and prosperity remain a classic among Pentecostal. He had strong links with international gospel ministers like Billy Graham, T.L.S. Bond, Kenneth Hagin, Penny Inn, Ray and Bonke, Maurice Cerullo, Ora Robert, amongst others, and took the gospel to 145 nations in his lifetime. At the time of his death in 1998, he had preached to more white than any black man and to more black than any white man. His desire to meet the need of the total man led him to establish several other arms of the ministry apart from the church. They include Faith, Metaplex, All Nation for Christ Bible Institute, World of Faith, Group of School, Bensi Indaosa University, which is currently under leadership of his son, Reverend E.F.B. Uh, Idaosa. His wife, Margaret uh, Idaosa, is the current Archbishop of the church. It was used by God to perform many miracles, including healing the blinds, raising up 28 people from the dead at different times in his ministry. You must understand this powerful man of God that God used 
to affect the nation of the world. And I'm glad and privileged that he was my father in the Lord. I am honored to be a part of his anointing, a part of his, of his ministry. I want to ask you, please make sure you share these videos, this video, this particular video, to bless all the people. And make sure you have enough time to visit Anointed Tube, support Anointed Tube, and let people all over the world around you, your village, your town, your city, your colleagues, your family, your friends, all your contact, get to know about Anointed Tube. So thank you for taking the time to listen to this or, or watch this video. I believe that um, your life can never remain the same because God's servant was such a powerful, powerful, humble, great man of God that God used before he was called to be with him. I, and I'll say it again, I am grateful and I'm privileged to be a son to Archbishop Bensi in the house. The Lord bless you.